Hello, Livable City. Welcome to 25% More Joy. My name is Katie Birnbaum. I'm the Associate Director for Livable City. On 25% More Joy, we talk with everyday San Franciscans about how they're reclaiming their streets to bring more joy to their lives and their community. Today, we're really excited to have Eva Lee from the Chinatown Merchants Association, um, and also the organizer and leader of the Chinatown Weekend Walkways. It's been running since uh, the summer of 2020. So welcome, Eva, to 25. Hi, thank you for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. Yes, well, a pleasure to be respectively here, I said, <laughs> <laughs> remotely here. Um, and I said, usually we're, we're uh, talking to each other in the street. So this is a little bit of a different format, but excited to have you here to talk about the streets. Um, so for those of you tuning in, if you didn't see our first episode of 25% More Joy, um, you can check it out at livablecity.org. Um, and that you can learn all about how our streets um, in San Francisco um, are being used now. Um, what the potential to transform them into spaces that um, are going to give uh, all of our communities more joy um, at, at livablecity.org. So we do encourage you to check that out. Um, but today we want to hear all about how Eva has been um, experiencing her streets and bring, using them to bring more joy into your life. So to get started, we're going to, so we've been in a pandemic. We're just talking about how it's, we're coming up on a year on the pandemic, um, or we just passed a year. Um, and we're all kind of collectively realizing how much we lost and things that we lost during the pandemic. But we're also kind of realizing that the pandemic and specifically opening up streets during the pandemic was able to bring stuff back into our lives. Um, can you talk a little bit about what the streets were able to give back to you and your community over the last year? Well, actually, we started in mid-July uh, opening up the streets when we were allowed to have retail open and the restaurants opening, out, opening with outdoor dining. And the result, the, pro, the city had a program called Shared Spaces Program, which allowed us to close off uh, part of our street. So what we did was close Grant between California to Washington for three blocks. It gave us an opportunity to have space for outdoor dining. It allowed for physical distancing so people could walk without uh, you know, uh, being farther apart to follow COVID guidelines. And we were, since it was car free, people could have take more advantage of the ambiance of Grant Avenue, which is actually quite iconic with its red lanterns, its uh, Chinese dragon lamps, and its architectural designs and the buildings. Mm -hmm. And so they could slow down more and take that, take that experience of being in Chinatown. They also had an opportunity to just meet other people on the street that uh, I myself have gotten to know people from actually now that we don't have international visitors, I was able to meet people from actually all over the country and have a nice little chat, which I never did before. And also meeting even local people. Every time I go down, there's always somebody I, I run into. So it's been really a nice experience just to bring in not only my own community to see my friends and family. We haven't seen each other for a while during the pandemic, but this gave us an opportunity to see each other as well as make, uh, make new friends with other people from other parts of the state you know, and the parts of the country. That's, that's amazing, that's amazing. And so, I mean, and if we, if we take ourselves back even, I mean, the summer of, summer of 2020 seems like so long ago, but if we even go back to this, the, you know, January, February of 2020, Chinatown was already feeling a lot of the effects of the pandemic, right? And was pretty, um, oh, yeah. pretty, um, desolate. I mean, I, I mean, from reports, you know, you know, everybody quote unquote looked at Chinatown as a, a ghost town. I'm sorry to say that because it was just we had all of us were in a, like a it it, it, it was a, it, it was catastrophic actually. You know, it's something very unprecedented to have this pandemic, and you know, tourism was nil. We usually get we get a lot of people from uh, other countries. But that was we now we no longer have that foot traffic. But fortunately, people are still willing to drive to areas, and San Francisco is still a destination, and Chinatown is a very popular uh, place that people like to visit. And so we are getting 
more, namely on the weekends, we find that there's a lot more traffic on the weekends, more so than the weekends. Because people <laughs> are working from home, they right. want to get out of the house, they're bringing their families. You know, we're seeing all kinds of people, all age ranges, um, during the walkway weekends that I've never seen before. So it's it, it, it's really nice to see more people around after being so having no one around and actually right. seeing at least people on the weekends. I mean, that's a huge, that's a huge gift that the street gave back to you is the ability to have, have in, to have visitors again, right? And to, and then to have your community and to, to hopefully help save some of those businesses. Um, okay, well, so there's also a lot of answers. There's, this is the time for reflection, right? So there's a lot of articles coming out about how the pandemic has erased entire categories of relationships and friends. So, you know, kind of our casual friendships or, uh, you know, the kind of, uh, water cooler conversations that you have with people at work, those things weren't really happening. Um, but uh, kind of, I already heard kind of what you're talking about there. It seems like uh, being in the street and having an open streets program um, actually brought some new relationships into your life. Can you talk a little bit about who it's brought to you? Actually, uh, a lot of the people in the arts, uh, arts community from Norman Lau of the Line Dance Me, he comes every weekend to do his line dance performance. So I've gotten to know some of the kids that perform and I'm amazed at what they can do. As long as some of the artists that come and do some of the um, painting of some of the, on the parklets. I, I, I didn't know all this talent, you know, that's out there in our community that I'm discovering. Uh, Jenny Lerum of the Chinese Culture Center had our music festival and we just had a round of, you know, wonderful musicians coming in one weekend for the music festival. And it's really nice when people come in, you're closer to them. And whether it's being on a big concert in a stage, that you're there right firsthand. And actually, people kind of get to know the musicians, know the artists more, because they're right there for them uh, performing or painting. And that that we never had before. It's, it's you know, kind of like a renaissance of, uh, of having the artists and musicians come back. Uh, I know they're back for a, a long time. A lot of them were actually leaving San Francisco at one time because of the red star getting so high. Maybe this now is an opportunity for a lot of them to start coming back to San Francisco. So that's an opportunity to meet all these kinds of people that I haven't met before until the Walkwood weekends. Great. What about in organizing the the organizing it and helping kind of create the walkway weekends experience? Did you meet new new people doing that? Oh yeah, you know, I met um, Harlan Wong of the Chinese Chamber of Commerce, who uh, who was a director of the Chinese New Year Parade. We collaborate. We're constantly thinking how to promote business, how to get more people into Chinatown. He said, "Why don't we have more tables so people can go to the restaurants and do takeout and then come back to the." come back to Grand and enjoy them. And that was a great idea. That has worked out so well. Right. And then and now um, Steve Lee, who's always connected and introducing me to these different people saying, you know, I really like to have more nightlife. And so maybe this is going to be like a launching pad into getting people come in the uh, afternoon, late afternoon, and they end up staying to eat at the restaurants or eating like this place at Vine's Den to have a little drink because he opens from like, five to 10. So it's kind of like uh, the walkway weekends have end up being like a launching pad mm -hmm. to other opportunities for them to see other areas of Chinatown that they have, they didn't know existed. So I'm learning that and meeting these different people that are able to um, introduce me to their businesses as well as uh, who, and another person I met was the people like uh, Leanna Louie of the United Peace Collective, the people that just volunteer, uh, keeping an eye on things. I, that's the first time I met them. And, you know, the dedication of these people during the pandemic now, the, the volunteers, I am just in awe of just them wanting to help. There's so many people out there now that just want to give back because of the position that Chinatown is now, that, that is, they're facing right now. So it's, it's really a lot of nice people, very dedicated people out there. Right, including yourself, Eva, including oh, yourself. <laughs> <laughs> 
which is, I mean, uh, I, you know, just hearing you talk, it's so incredible. You know, you're mentioning uh, some folks uh, and some events. So, you know, the Chinese New Year's Parade and Herald um, and Eva, you know, you, you run the Autumn Moon Festival for, for those of you <laughs> watching. Um, so it's not like you are new to Chinatown. You're actually, right. you, you know, you are all stakeholders. You are massive pillars in your in your community. But you weren't working together until you came together in this project. You were not. Yeah, that's right. Right. You that's, were. That's true. We, we were almost like, and uh, thirty years ago, we were like rivals. You would never think that even the Chinatown Merchant Association and the Chinese Chamber of Commerce would come together because. You know, he did his thing, they did our, their thing, and we did our thing. And then we're finding that we were even working with uh, the Chinatown um, uh, CCDC, the Chinatown Development Center with Malcolm. And we thought, you know, a lot of things that we might uh, uh, don't have, we have different outlooks on how we're Chinatown to go, but we were opening, we're becoming friends. And he even liked the outdoor, uh, the walkway weekends and he liked the outdoor dining and and I was shocked he loves it you know and I look I, I said wow I could I couldn't believe it <laughs> it's amazing I said it's the magic of the streets it's we don't yeah. we're, there's 25 percent more of our city that we can put towards building relationships mending relationships exactly. um and creating bigger and better programs for our communities and our neighborhoods right um, I love it. All right. Well, so on, on that note, <laughs> so we're going to do our dreaming big exercise with you. So it's post COVID. We can have full blown joy on whatever that looks like. And there's no more restrictions on kind of what, you know, how many people or what direction they need to be walking in or anything like that. So it's, you know, it's a free day. It's your street, your day. Um, what does your moment of joy look like in the street? A uh, moment of joy I'd like to see, of course, look, uh, more streets <laughs> like that, longer. So we go all the way from California, all the way down to Broadway. Mm -hmm. I'd like to see more residents in the street where like now I'm seeing kind of pop out every so often on weekends. I see little kids in their bicycle, just going around and around in a circle. I see another kid the other day was just racing also around and around circle. Take advantage of the street right now. That's their community. Take advantage of there's no cars around. You have to worry about your little kid being uh, run over. Mm -hmm. that's a possibility take a ability that uh, people just uh posing and being themselves out there and taking pictures whenever they want um and the line dance we have them every weekend and people are really enjoying the car culture and or the talent of our community enjoying that i'd like to see a lot more music out there like i did in cuba and and the, the, the positive vibes that you get from hearing beautiful music mm -hmm. and all this the beauty of uh, just bring to be people like that because all of this we all love for having a better quality of life from exercise and fresh air to just seeing a little lady on the bench just sitting there relaxing. Um, it's it's very nice and just having a space to do that. Um, it's it's really a wonderful feeling that uh, this kind of uh, venue has brought to our to Chinatown. I know, well, it's, right, the dreaming big exercise, I mean, the, the streets give us so much space to dream big, right? I mean, I think we're so, um, living in a, a dense city, we kind of get constrained by the, the thought that we don't really have enough space for things or space for people or space for cultural expression. Um, yeah. But our streets give us 25% more space to dream in um, if we embrace that. So I definitely, I, I hear you there. <laughs> uh, it's, as I said, it's, just, it's a way of life. I mean, it can really be all- Exactly. Yeah. Um, okay, well, with that, as our parting question, um, how can Livable City and the Livable City family help your community stay connected to your streets? I think just the fact that they have this message of what they're trying to do, keep on pressing that message out there. And, um, of course, continue to help us in our venture and being available for us for doing the technical uh, uh, help that we need on moving this forward, even whether it be on social media or being present on some of our walkway weekends have been really helpful. And to see uh, different people give our community that don't know what it's about to really kind of 
I think the more and more they see what it's trying to do and the more programming we have out there, I think more people get said, hey, you know, this is a, not a bad idea at all. Get a lot, then spread the word. Well, we're, we're there for that. That is something we are, we are there 100%. We're there to continue to help Walkway Weekends and Chinatown be in the street. Um, and to also continue to bring this out all over San Francisco um, because everybody deserves 25% more joy um, and everybody can access it if they just embrace uh, looking at their streets as a place to actually meet their joy and, and fulfill um, that need for their community. So um, with that, thank you. If you definitely do, do chalk, check out Walkway Weekends. It's every Saturday and Sunday on Grant Avenue from California to Washington, correct? Correct. So California to Washington, every Saturday and Sunday from 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. You can wander car free. There's tons of things to go look at. Uh, I said the architecture, the art, music, uh, lots of delicious food. Um, it is a place that is delightful to go wander around in on a Saturday or Sunday. So please go take advantage of that. And you might even run into Eva um, herself in real life. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, tune in next time, everybody, to 25% More Joy. And thank you, Eva. I will see you in the street sometime soon. You're welcome.